That look good. Yeah. Let me see. How can I get my picture big? So I can well, see. Um, all I know is the last time somebody tried making their picture bigger in their corner, all of a sudden it messed up everything. So it's, let's uh, not do that. I think I look guy. Right. You can <laughs> Yeah, okay. as long as you're staying in the middle, which you are, it'll compress it at the end. Uh -huh. You know what I mean to make a. I'm side just trying to side. see. If, I'm trying to see if I got both, but I do. I yes. got the edge of the tree with a book at. Then I got the globe over there with other book at in the back. We straight. We straight. Yeah, it's gonna make it in which we call it anyway. Like mine, you only end up seeing like this part right here. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't even worry about. It. Um, I definitely want to talk movies with you today. Uh -oh. So yeah, we're gonna go on some rants. You go with Let's that, right? It. Huh? All right. You're you're good with that. Your rants. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. You right. Welcome back to the show, Jeff. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's it's, it's always a pleasure, man. Especially yeah. with you, JD. People I loved your you energy the first episode, man. People loved your energy the first episode. Appreciate so, it. Ain't nothing change. It just got turned up even more, brother. I promise that. Yeah, I so say he's got a lot of it, you know. Because <laughs> what you working on right now? Well, we're working on a um, couple of things. Actually, my wife is, um, she, she's about ready to hit me in the head with a frying pan if I don't finish this audio book. But I'm also working on the site, you know what I mean? And this is new for me, you know what I mean? Just being honest, it's, it's absolutely new. I don't have a problem admitting that because we all have to start from a base, you know? So, I mean, I got sober and God put it on my heart to recover out loud. You know, not just walking down the street, you know, but like really being out there. So I have to learn from people like yourself, you know, who already have a platform and a knowledge base and resources. And I'm glad I'm, I'm beyond glad. Actually, I'm happy. And it's a blessing that I can, you know, text you and be like, yo, help me out with this. Help me out with that. And that's just a blessing. And I appreciate it. So I'm working on the website, which includes a blog. So um, definitely will be, you know, boosting up my email subscriber list with that. And it's going to have a whole bunch of exclusive content on there. We got the audio book and we got the workbook that we're working on. And um, I'm just um, I'm kind of full right now and I'm happy, you know. I'm yeah. Happy. And for those who didn't see Jeff's first episode, um, Jeff is an author. And since the last time you were on, congrats, man, you got married. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. newlywed yeah. author, yeah. first year sober. And he's yeah. the author of the book Sober Slogans, which is one of the catchiest names that you can give a first book that's going to get a lot of attention because there's been a lot of people on my show and I'll mention your book and they're like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Like, they have no idea who you are, <laughs> but they heard the name because they see it being smattered everywhere the way you promote, man. You're all over. I appreciate that. One, one of the things that I have and, and OK, I was a I was a copywriter years ago. So. Me and my ex-wife, we had a small marketing company and we marketed for small to mid-sized you know, uh, uh, businesses. So I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with writing. I never, and I love to always say this, man, because it's a part of my testimony. Um, you can ghost write for a website, right? So let's say I write for your website. I won't receive the byline because you'll pay me a little bit more money to make sure that you keep all of the rights, perpetual rights going forward, et cetera. So I did that. You know, I'm not going to say times are hard, but times were harder than I wanted them to be. Right. And I honestly, honestly did not see myself as being able to launch a writing career for myself. I thought I was only good enough, you know, to be a part of the machine of other, you know, bigger companies. And um, it's a beautiful thing that now I'm working on a website because I have a voice. Not only do I have a voice, but, you know, on, on my various social medias, it's showing me that my message is resonating with other people. And being that it's resonating with other people, I think that it's time for me to make a permanent fixture of who I am. Yep. And, I, and I read your book, man. And, and like, you know, you break it down in a way that's easy for someone. It's, it's, it's written by someone new in sobriety. So it's broken down in a way for people new in sobriety to not get Sometimes they get overwhelmed. You hand them a big book and they're just like their eyes get all big. Like, what the fuck am I looking yeah. at? You yeah. know, and they get overwhelmed and they start like, I don't know if I can do this yet. But you hand someone like a nice book like yours and you're reading about Star Wars and shit. You know what <laughs> I mean? You're reading about different ways to connect with somebody who was just trying to find ways to connect with a lot of people. One book, you know, and you and you're definitely doing that. You know, I see it all the time. You, your reviews are going up every time I go on there. You have more and more reviews that are positive. 
you know, so and I did, you know, I did get into your book. And I, like I said, it's that little things like that of the pop culture references. And it's the, the cliches that you attach to different pop culture things. And, you know, that's how I did my shit. You know, that's how I was working. Yeah. My early program was finding little ways to make make it tailored to me and make it ways that I'm going to understand it. And you did that really well, like breaking it down. So, I mean, the audio book, just a matter of finding the time, you know? Yeah. 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 It it'll is. Get, you'll get, it'll get there, you know, and it's yeah. not trying to overwhelm yourself either because you don't want to do too much at once and then you're going to burn yourself out. Exactly. But the beautiful thing about when, when, when you're the creator of your content, it's your time, you know, it's, it's based on what you can provide. You yeah. know, and one thing about me, I got to be honest, I think it took about 94 days to write the book, right? Definitely not going to take that long with, with, you know, anything that's not a book, right? But at the same time, I refuse to push out anything that's subpar. I don't, I, I, that just ain't me. I respect myself too much for that. I respect my community, especially if I'm asking you, you know, to trade two things to hear me, which is your time and your money. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to make sure, you know, that that I provide, you know, the best quality I possibly can. You know, and I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you making reference to, to Star Wars. I um, well, not making reference, but making reference to the fact that I made reference. Yeah. To it, right. One thing one thing I realized and and and. Let's 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 double back. Let's get back to uh, 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 the easy to read aspect of the book, right? I learned that if you're intelligent, not, let me not say that. I learned that if you know something, even if it's high concepts, that if you really know it, you should be able to break it down to a third grade. When I started my writing journey, a very great great writer came across one of his works. And that stuck with me. Okay, so we could talk philosophy all day, you know. We could talk what you want to talk, Communist Manifesto, Marx and Engels, and we'll be able, I'll be able to speak to you on your level as well as my nephew's level, because I understand it from a high point. So if I understand something from a high point, I should be able to break it down into digestible chunks for whomever it is that I'm delivering my message to. Yep. And so and you definitely did a good job of making sure that anybody be able to read it you know what i mean and it's not um, it's not definitely not a slight to say it's easy to read i'm saying it's a good thing because i know how i know how wordy you like to get <laughs> you know i know how i know how like you, you not not to show off i'm the same way when you when you're into writing and you're into like you know english and the language itself and finding new words and new phrases and you can get kind of choice with the words and try to get and yeah. they're like People yeah. like you have to break out the dictionary to read some shit. You're like, I don't want to have to do that sometimes when you're trying to read a book and the whole point is just to stay sober. We exactly. don't need you, we don't need you to break out a dictionary. We just need exactly. you to like find ways to relate to it. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I'm and, sorry. But you also write, you know, me and you had this in common that we found out the other day is we like to write story stories. You know, that's coming next. That's and, coming next. That's coming next. I guarantee you. Uh, 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 not next year because uh, Sober Slogans is actually a three-part book series, and that's just the first one, right? So I have to, and that's one thing about me, and and, and, and something else um, that Jay Sachs uh, 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 said. You know who Jay is, right? Nope. What? I put you on the Jay Sachs mindset, mindset coach extraordinaire. But Jay said, um, "What did Jay say?" What did Jay say? I'm going to get it. What did Jay say? I want to say it exactly the way he said it, man. I'm about to double back. I lost it. We're human. No, it's, I got to say it the same yeah, way he said it. We're though. human. But as, 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 oh, I got it, right? I like to make sure that when I keep my word to myself, Jay, you're going to be proud of me. I'm going to make sure you see this clip, right? I like to keep my word to myself because every time that I go back on my word, I'll lose a little bit of character every time right so although i want other projects to start off i have to make sure that i focus on what i committed no one else knows i committed it right <laughs> but i know that i did you know so i have to make sure that these three get out the way and then a novel or or a, a novella at yeah. least is sure to come it's so funny and we think so much alike too you and i because we've talked about that but like you know, 
the only people before I started putting out these episodes every day, you know, to raise, you know, the only people that knew that I was doing that were the ones I was asking to be on the show. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't even make an announcement like publicly, like, hey, be on the lookout for 37 straight episodes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, it was just for me, you know, think about it. Like that was, it was mostly for me to put that many out because it keeps me sober doing this, mm. finding ways to connect with people every day. It keeps me just as sober as it keeps the audience who's listening. And, and half the audience isn't even in sobriety probably, you know what I mean? They're either sober curious. Mm-hmm. I know a good buddy of mine, he just likes the war stories. You know, he just likes to listen into the war stories. So, and, and I'm, we put that kind of content out for him. Uh, you know, but not just for him, but there's a lot of people that are like him. They just want to hear the other side of the coin, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so there's a lot of different people that will listen or watch these episodes and they're not necessarily even in the community. So see, that's, that's the beauty of, of, of the bigger picture, if you will, of the message. You understand what I'm saying? Because our community is a community of warriors, right? Let's, let's just, let's get to it. Our community is, is people just like you, obviously, just like me, obviously, but people who came across a traumatic experience at some point in their life, right? And they didn't like the feeling. They didn't like the feeling. You know what I mean? So they sought something outside of themselves because at that time in their lives, they didn't feel, and nine times out of ten, they did not have the capacity to deal with the trauma. So they dealt with something else that, that helped them deal with that trauma. And, and we call that active addiction, bro. No matter what that something else might be, it might be sugar. Dude, my addiction, my outward, my first manifestation, it was sugar. It was Hershey's Kisses. I kid you not. I could walk from here to my bedroom. I can ask my wife who's in the bedroom right now to come bring me that bag of Hershey Kisses. I started, no, seriously. Girl hurt my heart. I was already going through a whole bunch of other things, right? You know, because I come from an addictive uh, 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 family. So, of course, I'm not getting my needs met. And then something really happened that that became the catalyst. And, I, you know, for me, it was me stuffing my face with Hershey's Kisses, you know. And that didn't do the trick. So I moved on to cocaine. I moved on to uh, 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 marijuana and, 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 and 40 ounces. In my like, a res- like a responsible nine-year-old. <laughs> exactly. Because weren't you the one that told me you were nine? Yeah, so, when I yeah, started. yeah, that's what I thought. Your grandma, right? Well, that's, not when, with, that's when not with your grandma, well, but you know, your grandma that, took you. That, that's yeah. later when I moved in with my grandma, okay. but I'm not like when my when when you know selling little joints and stuff like that. And I saw with you, yeah, yeah. I knew. I remember yeah. it was Hershey Kisses. Took because I remember it was somebody I talked to. They're like, yeah, you know, I was nine. It was Hershey Kisses, and then it was you know Coke. I'm like, yeah, that's that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's how that works. You know, you know, the 80s but, were crazy, man. <laughs> I, I wasn't doing coke at nine, but still, you know, um, by the time by the time I reached 12, I was doing drugs and then I stopped for a little while. And then I was, you know, full blown by 15. And then by 16 is when the crack cocaine started. Yep. And I will make you feel better, too. You did tell me a story. Episode one that made you feel bad. And it was about the bodega and how you ended up back at the same bodega with the same cops a couple years later. Dude. Well, well, my friend, I did have somebody on my show after you that did get arrested by the same cops in the same motel years apart. Respect, respect. So I, I was able respect. to able to tell him about you and make him feel a little less bad about. It. So now I'm telling you, you I definitely were it. the only one arrested. I really thought I was the only one on the planet who experienced <laughs> that, man. That, I mean. That was That's why I love doing this show, because there's so many times I'm talking to somebody. I'm like, oh, my God, that happened to another one of my guests. You know what I mean? I can tell them, like, you yeah. weren't alone. Because maybe yeah, it didn't happen alone. to me. Yeah. Maybe it didn't happen to me. But I love finding the other ones. And, you know, the way mm-hmm. my mind works is like a little encyclopedia sometimes with some of the information. So I'm like, oh, go to this episode. You're going to yeah, see. You gotta yeah, yeah. And, that's, <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that, honestly, to hear that, that honestly just shows how well you know your craft. If you can reference episodes, your whole episodes. I've been know, doing that. I've been doing that since Seinfeld, though. I've been doing that since. You can tell me. You can describe a Seinfeld episode. I can tell you which season. Yeah. The title of the episode. No, I'm not that deep. It depends. It depends. There's yeah. a lot of TV. You know shows. how that works. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of TV shows that I've been able to. You know, my brother will call me and said, "Hey, I'm trying to find this South Park episode," and he'll describe it, and I'll tell him where to find it. You know, or same with any of the sitcoms. 
And it just the way my mind worked with like TV and just equating like, mm-hmm. oh, you know what? That episode came out in 2012. I was living in Massachusetts. So that was season five. And I do this weird thing of yeah. connecting the dots. It's, really it's, yeah. But that's the beautiful thing. See, that's the beautiful thing. All right. Because you ain't burn out all your brain cells. Nah. You nah. ain't burn out all your brain cells. Believe I, that. <laughs> no, definitely not. You know, I definitely burn out some. That's yeah. for damn sure. And, you know, we're Believe still that. getting them back. We are still getting them back, and that's the whole point of doing this all the time. Um, Now, the stories thing I want to talk to you about. Like, Mm -hmm. is there, like, a a certain movie that you can, that you'd like to watch that's about addiction that shows it, that closely correlates what your addiction was to you? Good question. Woo! Good question. Because I know you're a cinephile like I am, you know, and there's a lot of movies that, like, I'll watch and I'll find myself in like, you know, characters, even if it, even if it wasn't the same drug of choice, uh-huh. you know, it was the oh, madness, right. you know. Low. OK, yeah. Low on, on, on a very small level. Let me not say like, you know what I mean? Well, no. Let's yeah. You, you want to reference blow? You want to let the family know who uh who's in well, blow? Well, actually, you know, I had a guest on last week that used to buy his coke from George Jung's dude in Boston in the 80s. No way. He's from Boston, and his Coke dealer got his Coke directly from Georgie back in the 80s. Okay. Um, so, yeah. He, and I was I like, a no, lot of New York references. Yeah, man. I said, no wonder why you need a rehab, bro. <laughs> you were <laughs> doing George's Coke. You needed some rehab. You needed rehab. Yeah, but. Honestly. Yeah, but the but, George. Um, yeah, that, but Blow, the movie Blow, being honest with you. Any move, but see, and when I say that, I'm talking about. The party aspect. If you remember the scenes with the party, I mean, there's a lot of movies that I could reference with that, right? But the fiend aspect, I, I could reference di- di- different TV shows like, um, don't get me the line about what episode, but there's multiple episodes in in um in um oh man Breaking in, Bad. In, um, no, 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 hold up. In um in Wire in the Wire. In the wire, yeah. episodes in the wire. If you really, if I, if I had to keep it absolutely one thousand, right? I can honestly say for major, the time that I was down here, because I used to get high in New York, but that was in like ninety nine, and then I got arrested. I, I had to do you know ten straight years. But my last time that I was getting high for that four year binge, um, I was definitely pookie. New Jack City. New Jack City. I'm, dude, no, like seriously. That's yeah. why one of the things I love to say is I would cover out loud because I used to smoke out loud. Like I was pookie, dude. I can totally see you being po- pookie walking dude, out. Was, dude, police be across the street. I have my thing in the air, not caring. You know, um, don't know when the last time I slept. Don't know when the last time I showered. You know, I um, probably got, you know, some bobos on my feet. Definitely been times where I'm a nine and a half. I'm wearing a 12. Got some tissue up in there. Um, got the white mouth. I'm just, you know. Yeah, dude. I always, and nobody ever. Nope, nope. Not <laughs> many. Not many people have seen that movie though either. You know what I mean? Not many people even know about that movie. Let's be honest. Um, I was pleasantly surprised when I was tagging. You know, David. You know, um, Freeman. He was on. He was my guest today. Um, he's good friends with Jr. Out of Charleston. He's got tattoos on neck and shit. Um, yeah, I see his, my face. yeah. His his handle is Nino Dot Brown. And I'm like, I know exactly where you got that name from. Yeah, yeah for um, sure. But the the New Jack City, the, the, I always think of Pookie when he's relapsing. That always sticks to me. That that madness of that the coming to tears moment. But before he hit that crack pipe, because yep. he knew he was going to hit it. Yep. He knew that it was a wrap and it was just inevitable. Yep. And he had already relapsed in his yep. head it's before done. he even smoked it, you know, and. Yep. I talked to somebody the other day, and they were like, yeah, when I relapsed with drinking, I was even shaking for that first drink before I put it to my lips. And, and I even made a reference to Pookie at that moment, and they didn't you know New Jack City. But I'm like, yeah. it reminds me of this movie with Chris Rock. And they're like, Chris Rock was a crack addict? I'm like, you got to see it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it does. It reminds me of, like, he's, like, holding it up. To, and he's like, his hands are shaking. His whole entire, he's crying as he's hitting it. And... Yeah. Yeah, and I remember with pills, every time I was relapsing, it was the same thing where it's like, how can I not get this? It's such a frustrating thing to think in your head. Like, I don't understand why this isn't working for me, you know? I'd I'd be, I'd be. The crazy, and you mentioned blow. The craziest thing about blow is the real life implications that come 
with making a movie like that because not a lot of people know this. The guy that directed Blow, mm -hmm. he died of a cocaine overdose two years later. No way. No way. Yep. Yeah, he you know he was a big director director and shit like that, but that was the last movie he did. He went on a bender, and That's within two years of the movie coming out, he had he had an overdose from cocaine and died. Um, it's sad. Oh, you don't hear about it, right? That. And you didn't even know about it. So, no. And I just found out a couple of years ago. But yet, mm -hmm. this happened early 2000s, man. Like, when yeah. that movie came out. And, you know, I was still in love with, you know, I still love that movie. It's still a great movie to watch. I, I love that quote that, um, you know, his dad always said to him in that movie. You know, about when, uh, when it's good, it's, it never feels like it's going to get better. When you're exactly. down, you never feel like you can get out. Exactly. And it's not the exact words he uses. I'll, maybe, maybe I'll pull it up for this thing when it's the, you know, the published version. But I always think of that quote that he says to him the whole entire time. It's basically saying, like, when you're in the shit of it, when you're in having the worst possible day, you think this can't, I can never get out of this. My day is never going to get better. Mm -hmm. But it does. And yeah. then when you're having the best life ever and everything's going right, it's going to come down again. The hammer's going to drop. <laughs> and just but that's it. the journey, though. That's yep. the journey. And, 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 and for me, right? Okay. It, you know, it is one of the chapters in my book, but it's, you know, it's one of those recovery models I honestly live by. You know, recovery is a journey. It's not a destination. You know, and the reason why that that that's dear to my heart is because now that I'm sober, I am reinventing who I am on a daily basis. There's certain things that I can reference, right? Because no matter where we go, that's where we are, right? I see the guy that I want to be today. I see him five years from now. That's how I work. This is serious for me. But in order, first and foremost, in order for me to even see that guy, the future version of who I am, I have to believe in myself, right? In order for me to believe in myself, I have to have a thought process, right? That we call a belief system. It's actually a consistent thought process that the way that we look at different things in our life, it's one whole. But we look at different things, you know, it's, it's, it's fractured understandings of different things in our life. Me, right now, I'm at the spiritual point where I don't see distinctions between people unless they are God conscious or not. And that's for me. I believe that every human on this planet is family. Some of us are walking in faith and some of us are not. I was told that I'm supposed to recover out loud so those those of us who are still not sure who they are can find a message because that's how I found the message by my predecessors who found themselves, right? Not being selfish and saying, we got to give this back. So that, that's why I do what I do. And it's a journey because as we continue, I mean, come on, all that trauma that I've been through, I got to, I got to reframe who I am. That's the recovery part, the health part. And that's a journey because I'm constantly learning who I am today. And the only reason uh, for me, to, I do a lot of um, I do a lot of introspecting. I really do on all kind of ways. You know, I got to get back to my journaling, but I write on a daily basis. So honestly, that's journaling. Right. Especially all the articles I'm, I'm stacking yep. up before the website even comes out. So, I'm, you know, I'm writing and reading on a daily basis. Now, when I come across a new piece of information. My reference point is how I view it right now. Now I get the information. I got to process how I view it right now, get that information, and then see if it stretches me. Do I agree? Do I disagree? Why? Why not? Okay? And this is a very simple thing. But when you're in recovery, I believe it's extremely important for us to be purposeful when we make decisions about everything. Because we are getting back on the road to health. And it's a journey. You're going to have your highs. You're going to have your lows. You're going to like yourself today. You're going to love yourself tomorrow. You're going to dislike yourself next week. But it's a journey. You don't arrive at, re for me, you don't arrive at recovery. Even though, even though in the big book, 
okay? It does says recovered multiple times. I forgot how many times, how many different places. 17. But some, huh? But 17, 17, but people, and I was talking about this in my meeting this morning. It says recovered from drugs and alcohol. It doesn't mean we're recovered from our thinking. It's I'm in recovery constantly from my thinking. Constantly. I'm in recovery from my thoughts and recovery to be a better person Indeed. to always be working on myself. I'm recovered when it comes to having an obsession. I don't. I'm my, my obsession has been lifted. Yeah, if, I been, if I haven't drank over my wife coming down with the you know MS and all the other shit that's come along in sobriety, right. you know what I mean? Like it, it's not even. It doesn't even cross my mind as a solution anymore. Like it used mm. to be the first mm. solution was, yeah. we're, I got to go get drunk now. I'm going to feel yeah. better. Hey, fix it. It's not going to fix shit. You know, it's going to mm. make it everything worse and spend money I don't have. Yeah. Know, let's be real. <laughs> so, you, you know, yeah. so it's not even a thought. I'm recovered when it comes to the obsession of my mind of where my solutions go first. But mm -hmm. I am constantly in recovery when it comes to being a better person, I'm constantly spot checking and correcting. I'm mm -hmm. constantly finding myself going, you got to work on that shit, man. That's yeah. not right. You got to work on just being a better human, a better husband, a better stepfather, a better brother, a better son, so, just being a better person. You know, I'm not done in recovery when it comes to that. I am recovered from the obsession of my mind of what my solutions used to be to what they are today. Right. And that's, that's mm -hmm. that difference of that's, People get all caught up and they want to get so like butthurt, like you can't say recovered. It's like, man, it says it in the book, but it also says in the book it's recovered from that. It's not all not, of it. Not, not it, because if that's the case, there's no more growth. Speaking of recovery, uh -huh. you, my friend, have a new show that I want to talk to you <laughs> about on Recovery Revolution channel on Facebook called Part in My What? Reach. Part in My Reach. Now, and that's you and Sarah, your lovely wife. You guys get together and go live on Saturdays and have, have guests? Mm-hmm. It's Talk beautiful. About. Yeah. Well, well, we just did episode four. I appreciate that segue. We just did episode four, and it was the first time people actually saw Sarah, like, on the show, right? She's, you know, she's behind the scenes, and um, we felt it was extremely important for people to know that I actually do have a wife named Sarah, right? Because I'm always referencing her. But um, that's what we do, you know. Okay, so part of my reach, part of my reach is 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 um. Hmm. It says, in my heart, this is what it says. I don't have to make excuses for being great, cause that's what I was born to be. Not saying you're not. Not saying she's not. I was born to be great. Part of my reach. Because that's what I'm reaching for. I'm reaching for greatness. Gotcha. Okay. So everybody that comes on the show, prerequisite is they have to be sober, right? <laughs> you got to be sober. You're reaching for greatness and you out there, you know, getting high. I just, yeah, that's not going to work, right? So we have people from our sober uh, uh, our community come on and we chop it up. You know what I mean? Same thing you're doing with me, brother. Letting people know that we have, a, we, we have like, gazillions of recovering addicts, gazillions of people who are in sobriety. You that's with a G, that? that's with a G, people, gazillions with gazillions. a G. Gazillions. Coming from the writer himself, he knows <laughs> it. <laughs> and, and as many people as I can get on the show who yeah. have a message that aligns with mine, I'm gonna get them on the show. Yeah, I don't January, care. January 15th, I'll be uh, I'll be a live guest, right? That's what we said, January yeah, 15th. Yeah, I'll be yeah, I'll be a live yeah. guest that night. Yeah, we locked in. I'm so yeah. happy about that. Yeah, we'll be on there and you know just talking shit, you know. Yeah, and I'm so happy about that because the reality is this, bro. We get caught up. We get caught up in a lot of stuff. Me being ADD. I try to stay focused. When I stay focused on something, as long as that is a good thing for me from the beginning, it ain't no telling what's going to happen. And that's how I view this thing right here that we call sobriety, right? That we call being in recovery. I, For me, I need to be obsessed with letting someone know every day in some kind of way. I don't care if it's a post. I don't care if it's a quote. I don't care if it's a video. I don't, I don't care what it is. I need to let someone know every single day they're great. They're great. 
you just got to wake up to the fact that you're great. Because once you wake up to the fact that you're great, now you got the YouTube channel. Now you got the podcast. Now you got the, and then you got the, and then you got the, and then because God, I say God, you can use whatever, you know, terminology you want to use. But I believe that when you're doing good into the universe and God recognizes that, that equity that you put into the universe, it comes back to you in beautiful ways. You want to see what happened to me today? I would love to see what happened to you today. Bro. I I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I came across a podcast that was very similar to mine. I realized, oh shit, I might be in the wrong category. Mm. So I changed the category. And um, yeah, I went I, I got a thousand listens today once I changed that category. Look at that bar. Wow. Look now at that God bar straight up. Now God is good. Wow. Three hours, three hours. You know, I posted on Friday. I was at 1,750 view listens. Just just audio. And I was trying to hit 2,000. And then I picked up 1,000 in a matter of three hours. And just just um, with that one hack. And, and I also went into Apple and I changed my podcast the weekly to daily. Uh-huh. And now, and now I'm in the top 227 in Apple Podcasts. So that's just as I'm not I'm not even going to make the announcement announcement. Unless you're watching now, you're going to find it a little early. <laughs> but I'm going to make the announcement announcement at the end of the year when I can get some final numbers. Yeah. Um, but it's about pushing, man. It's about not giving up for the miracle happens. That's right. You know, and that and that comes with sobriety. That comes with anything that you're passionate about. When it comes to how many times you're writing that book and you're like, why why am I doing? Like you almost forget. You Dude. know. You, Frustrating. Look, crying. Because yeah. mind you again, family, I was writing the book. I, I'm only this is this is this is a year real, three like, months. Yeah, I don't even think I reached four yet. Ah, I have a year, four months, and six days. I don't keep track. I don't keep yeah. track. But okay, so you know, and, and during that time, I only had a couple of months clean. You know what I'm saying? But see, I did what they told me to do. People places and things now speaking of people i gotta cut you off too because the last time we talked you also have seen somebody recently that you hadn't seen in a while that we talked about and you got to reunite with one of your daughters yeah that was beautiful man i saw you posting about that yeah. and like, i know where you was going but yeah <laughs> yeah you were posting I remember, before you even saw her you were posting being excited to see your daughter again you know, and you know, she was it. giving you you know, so how'd that happen, man? Did she reach out to you? We were in contact with each other. Don't get me wrong, but I, I, I mean, you know, um, as long as I'm doing good, obviously my daughter, you know, would love me to have her in her life. I'm the kind of guy that when I'm out there and I'm fucking up, I'm in my A, dude. I'm not in my family's purse. I'm not, you know, that ain't my staff. I'm gonna go get it. This is what I'm about. No matter what it is, I'm gonna go get it. And you ain't gonna know whether I'm alive or dead. And that was the case with my family, honestly. They didn't know if I was alive or dead. You know, um, since I've been sober, you know, on social media, you know, talking to my daughter and, you know, and it was like, okay, I'm coming down. When you coming down here, sweetie? You know, and that was just the blessed thing because I hadn't seen her for years. I hadn't seen my daughter probably for like, five, what? Like five, six years? Probably longer than that. No, longer than that. Longer than that. Um, probably like eight years. Probably like now eight she's years. All, now she's all grown up. And Ooh. she got she got to meet, you know, your lovely. You know what I mean? Like, you guys have yeah. to have a bonding experience. Yeah. Like, I was seeing you post about it. I was so happy for you, bro. Like, I appreciate it. Because I knew how much it meant to you from the first time you were on. And, you know, we were talking about it. And you were just like, I just don't know when they're going to be ready. You know, they yeah. know I'm here. They know I'm ready whenever they, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. going to force it. Yeah. And you did exactly what you're supposed to do. You don't force it. You let them come to you when they're ready, you know, yeah. and they want you in their life. They just want to make sure you're good. You're, yeah, you, exactly. you're, that's, you're that's bad it. again. You're Jeff, yeah. you know, yeah. you're not got the crackhead, like not, you said. Not crackhead Jeff, yeah. Not crackhead really, Jeff, yeah. yeah. We, that, can't, we can't be having crackhead Jeff around nobody again. Woo! Can't be having that. Well, he's dead anyway. But, he'd be um, selling them books like crazy. <laughs> you uh, be selling them books like even crazier to try to but no, we it's we're all that would be insanely funny. <laughs> but no, we we all gotta have some kind of obsessions though, you know, that are healthy obsessions. It's yeah. about finding the healthy obsessions. And yeah. like, you know, that maybe the sugary kisses, you know, it's an unhealthy but healthy obsession, right? At the same time, at the end of the day. 
it's unhealthy because, you know, body, health-wise, weight, you know, sugar, all that shit. But at the same time, like, it's not cigarettes. It's, it's, imagine if you were, like, constantly smoking as many Hershey Kisses as you ate. Yeah, That's that a lot of chain smoking. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? been, there's a lot of packs right there, bro. A lot of packs. Yeah. So lot the, of packs. The, there's a difference between having healthy and unhealthy obsessions. It's a matter of finding things that you like to do or, you know, not find escapism with, but also that help you cope with, I should yeah. say. It's not like, yeah. you know, you escape with food. It's that it's part of a coping mechanism. And then with that, and I'm, and I'm agreeing with you 100%, but then with that, you know, it's moderation. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's definitely moderation. Like, my weight goes up, it goes down. Dude, I got up to 196 pounds and just felt just too big. You know what I mean? I that's just like, <laughs> I, I, I wish. <laughs> See, that's what it's right? <laughs> like, like, 196, my sixth grade again? <laughs> Like, what is that? <laughs> You're a child. Get your weight up, literally, right? You said 196, you know. Uh, yeah, but now I'm down, I'm now I'm down to a lean uh 180 something, right? <laughs> but it's about it's 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 about no, it's about you being comfortable also. It's about you being comfortable too. Yeah. You know, and you know that's that's where you gotta be comfortable because you were a lot smaller than that too. Let's be real. When you weren't eating, like we talked about it, you know, you were like basically emaciated on the side of a curb right that was seriously. you yeah like seriously yeah it was it was ugly yeah it was ugly. you know i got down to probably about 119 118 bruh it was ugly you're not no high school wrestler you don't need to be 119 as an adult you know that's, like that's, no. that's, Wrong that's man. in my yeah. 40s in your 40s i just, 40s. Turned, I just <laughs> turned 49 so we talk about you know last summer and, and, you know, for four years, you know, straight before that, you know. so And, and then we're talking down south, the heat and the humidity that's drying oh. you out and the high, how dehydrated you must have been. I told you, man, I was a tin man. I referenced yeah. that in the book. He did, and yeah. And I get, you know, um, when, 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 they did, um, when they did plug me up with liquids, dude said it looked like, and it did, it looked like beetles were in my stomach. I was so dehydrated that when they were pumping me up with fluids, you, you saw my stomach going up and down to different places. They was like, how'd you make it? The cocaine kept me going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at that point, you know, you're just running on fumes, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. and is that, so I want to talk about story again one more time. Is that when you do sit down to write something, because it's different writing something in a book form to writing something as a script, to writing something as a story. Now, are you trying to eventually write your story as something, or do you have another story in mind that you would want to write about? Mm -hmm. Okay. I like to write the story. I like to write the story of of, of um the everyday addict. Mm -hmm. I want no. that on TV. I want that as a Netflix show. I'm serious. The everyday, the real shit though, because it's Netflix, so we can keep it a hundred. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? We can keep it a hundred because it's Netflix. But I'd seriously like to see you know, the nuances of what recovery is truly about on screen. The everyday fucking person. And when you put that episode on, there's no way that multiple times, each episode, you ain't sitting there either doing this, huh, right? Or doing this and then having to come back because that shit done brought you somewhere. And you're like, whoa, I'll think about that later. But whoo, every story should touch the head and the heart. Every story should allow someone to see themselves in that narrative or want to be in that narrative. Yep. And if we writing stories for us, bro, I can't go wrong. That's what I want to see. Yeah, That's I've always, see. yep, I, I can't agree. I mean, I've always shit, though, like yeah. shameless, like shameless, like yeah. you know how they did, you know what I'm saying? Like real shit for recovering addicts. When, when, when they go up and when they go down, when they go even higher, when they get even lower, like because this is. It's real life for yep. gazillions of us. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that is, I mean, we're talking now the leading cause of death. I know you're, you know, outside of 45 now, like you just said, you're 49. 18 to 45 officially announced today in the United States. Yes. Yes, leading cause of death is fentanyl. Not disgusting. even Not even car accidents. Fentanyl beats out car accidents now. So that's that how this morning, that hit this morning, hundred percent. Yep, and you know yeah. it's such is so 
crazy to even think and about. Listen, but, 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 okay, go back to the demographic from 18 all the fucking way to 49, 48 or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Come on. It used to be like, they used to break demographics down. They still basically had the same categories from like 18 to like 25, I think, or 24. And then from 24, you know, they break it down. You just said from 18 to what? 45. Okay. For 45, from 18 to 45. The leading cause of death is not cancer. It is not car accidents. It is strictly fentanyl-related death is the leading cause of death now for that age group. It's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting, man, and it's not slowing down. That's all we disgusting. can do, oh, and that's and that's why I recover so out loud, man, is because I want those people to at least catch wind of the, some of these stories. You know, I the more the more episodes I put out, and people will tell me all the time, like, man, I can't keep up with how many episodes you put out. I, I can't watch your show Good. every day. Because I'm Good. always trying to catch up. I'm like, It'll be I, I'm, I'm like, yeah, it's not going anywhere is what I always say, because I need to do that. You know, like there's somebody else that's going to resonate with your story that won't resonate right. with you, resonate with tomorrow's or the next right. day. That's right. You know, and that's why I told you I've been doing return guests on the weekends. To try mm -hmm. to get more of a spotlight of the week of the people that they've never been out there yet. And mm -hmm. there's so many different stories out there. So many different people that are stuck and they're so ashamed. But as soon as they start hearing us laughing and telling the same kind of stories. But while we're laughing at it because we're happy to be sober today. We can laugh at our madness now. Like we couldn't laugh at we couldn't yeah. laugh at you being 120 pounds when you were 120 pounds. Well, I was 120 pounds, right? <laughs> we can when you're 196. I'm sorry, 180 something because you lost Thank a little. You. Thank <laughs> you. you know, I'm kind of lean now. We can. We can know now. You know, the further yeah. you get from it, the easier it is. You know, and you know me, I'm all about shining that lightness on the darkness. That's you know, right. as somebody that loves comedy, I have to find the funny. Yeah. You know, and there's it's a reason. Much. We there. We there's there. a. You know how everyone always said there's, you know, there's, oh, it's too soon. It's too soon to say that joke. But the point is, there's always lightness. There's always that light in the dark. Sometimes it's too soon to say that joke, you know, mm -hmm. from an incident. But there's always going to be a joke. There's always that comedian that has that yeah. joke ready because it's always there. you have to be able to do that. It makes it a lot easier to live with yourself when you can find that kind of thing. You know, if life, and, if life had no irony, man, it'd be quite boring, brother. <laughs> yeah. Quite boring. You know? Yeah, that 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 I agree with. You know, it's it's funny to laugh at this shit now, you know, but in it, in it, you know, it was just but that 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 when I saw that statistic today, you know, leading cause of death, I was like, man, we what else can I do? You know, it's one of those I things. I definitely had experiences with it down here. I'm in Atlanta. I am from New York, but I've been down, you know, in Atlanta since 2008. So I've. I've definitely had various experiences with it. I refused to sell it when I was out there. Mind you, crackhead Jeff. All right? I was just like, nah, I ain't going to help you sell that, bro. Like, all right, then fuck you. Don't come around here no more. I'm like, all right, then I won't. But that, nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't no. Yeah, you know, I, you know it's, it's enough to keep me scared, actually, for a relapse. You know what I mean? I'm good choice. It's, it's ingrained in those fake pills. Mm. You know, and I and I just know my luck, man. You know, my relapse, one pill, I'm done. Yeah, I mean, you know, so you know that right there is enough. But I haven't had an obsession for doing any kind of drugs in a while. Luckily, you know, that's why you still work this. That's why I still work the steps every day. Yeah. That's why I do this show. That's why I talk to people. 100%. You know, like you. You know, um, for me, I I would want to see, and I haven't seen this yet. The closest I've seen to it was Dopes that kind of did it. But I would want to see a show where it shows the human side to the addict, though, too. The problem is if we're watching a show that's showing, you know, the everyday addict there, we're not we would love to humanize them. But the, the people that aren't drug addicts, you know, with past or anything like that, they're going to be judging the entire time on that addict. But I like to show I would want to see a flash back and forth, you know, like. You know how a lot of things in sobriety we get through from tools that we got from from addiction. Yeah, 100%. Like talk to you me, know, talk to me. there's a lot of things that you know. Even this, even the hustle, the drive. I was going to reference that. You yeah. know, of putting out new content every day. Grinding. Me putting out new content every day was me texting dealers every day, me trying to find money, me trying to hustle, me trying to find sales. 
Hey, you're going to need some drones today? You're going to need some drones today? All right, I'll pull your money. I'll pull your money. Oh, don't forget, you owe me one. Yeah. Oh, you got to get me one for getting you. That hustle. All of instead, that. Instead of that it's hustle. The same is, thing now. That's yeah. why people's like, yo, how did you, dude, like, it's blowing my mind. How much time do you have? We were given gifts. The way we choose to use our gifts is up to us. I was given the gift of the hustle, bro. And I mean that with all my heart. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Pardon my reach. You understand what I'm saying? But that's what I'm going for. I'm hustling as hard as I did to smoke crack. And ain't and I'm not there yet. So don't, I'm, don't get me on here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not there yet. I am in the process of learning how to organize myself so I don't burn myself out. So when I do deliver the content, it's always of a quality that makes my wife smile. If my wife can smile about it, because I second guess myself all the time. I'm being honest. Me too. I always second guess myself. Dude, like, come on, I'm a writer. Stop playing. I'm sensitive as fuck. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm always second guessing myself in most things. You know what I mean? And and, and she's a very good soundboard because I'm like, no, I don't want to, I don't want, I'm not talking to my wife right now. I don't want to hear that shit. I, it's fantastic. I don't want to hear that, Mrs. Vickers. <laughs> I want to hear from somebody who really don't give a fuck about recovery. Tell, talk, come, talk to me from that. Did I convince you to think about anything? Did I, you know, say did my analogies work for something for someone who's just so curious? You, you know, so, but you know, we're giving gifts, and it's nothing wrong with the gifts that we have when we use those gifts to bring life into the world because that's what we're doing, bro. This is so real for me. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, do my little show to get a like here and a like there to sell another, bro. I'm going to be all right. My book's going to sell. I promise you that. That's not an issue. I don't do this for that. You understand what I'm saying? I focus on marketing for the book, for the book and everything else is just love, you know, because that's what it's about. Love was given to me. So I got to make sure that every day I'm on the ground. I haven't gotten there yet. I definitely commend you. You understand what I'm saying? But that's what I'm growing into, to be able to hustle just as hard as I did. Bro, I ain't play. As soon as I woke up, I took a blast, and I was on go. I don't care where I'm at, who's still sleeping, bro. It's time to get it. It's time to get it. And the kind of money that touched my hands every day that, that I smoked up was just disgusting. But that's how much of a hustler I was. So I need to be doing the same thing for what I call God's work. You yes, know, God sir. finally touched me in all these years of me talking my crap to him and about him. He <laughs> finally touched me. You know what I mean? So I'm doing God's work. And that don't stop, bro. Somebody that asked me to stop. do that math once, man. Somebody asked me to do that math. Like, how much money you think you would have had if you never would have spent that money? I'm, <clears throat> and But I, I, I said, you know, you know your answer is mute, right? It, it, it doesn't. The answer is bullshit. Because if I'm not on drugs, I'm not hustling that hard, right? I'm not going to be selling pills to just line my pockets. Just a lot, yeah. I'm not going to sell drugs sober. Yeah. I'm just to put money just because I know it's a money cow. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you take away the drugs. You also take away that drive that I had to make that money illegally. So, you know, I wouldn't have had that money regardless is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. I but made the drive. You shift. I still the have. I still okay. have the drive. I still have yeah. the mentality. It was about finding something else I would love that much and be that passionate about. And I found that in, you know, creating content. Lo and, and behold. Yeah. And I get obsessed too with that, like, did I do this wrong? Or like I'm sending off like yet yeah, tomorrow's episode. I already yet yeah, yesterday. I already cut the clip and I already like I was for me, my favorite part in any episode is finding the perfect song with the perfect clip to promote on TikTok and Instagram and all that mm -hmm. shit. I love, you know, because of that movie shit, right? Mm -hmm. I love finding the perfect song to inflict an emotion. Yes, sir. And then I love finding and putting it in the perfect spot and making sure it's right there. And it I've hits. gotten better at that. And, yeah. you know, it's so, it's my favorite thing to do. But, you know, last night I fired off like three to my wife at once. I'm like, what song is better? She had to listen, you know, three minutes of the same, you know, spiel that mm -hmm. the person was saying, but with three different songs. Yeah. And I knew which song she was going to pick just because I could see it in her face, the emotion mm -hmm. that she connected with. Right? That's, right. that's love. And that's that's more or less what I'm doing. You know, as I'm sending off to her, I'm not even waiting for her to respond. I already got her response from her face.
Exactly. And that's that kind of shit you were talking about. You sent off to your wife. And it's like, what? And we get so self critical. I remember the first time, like, she was like my little practice dummy with, like, you know, recording stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember I made her into a clone, you know what I mean? One time I was bored and I made her a twin, you know, where she could interact with herself, you know, how they Mm -hmm. do that, like, on TV and shit like that. I want to do that. And then I, I could see the little sliver in the screen. It would bother the shit out of me to tell the difference between where mm. I cut it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you're fucking crazy. I can't even see it. Like, I, it looks like I have a twin. Like, yeah. we sent it off to her good friend who was very confused that all of a sudden she had a twin. <laughs> Just to prove to me that I was crazy, that I was seeing yeah. shit. Because yeah. we get so caught up in being, you know, perfect, but really was, you know. We, we create our definition of perfect. You know, my show is about perfection. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what perfection meant until I was two weeks sober at 32 years old. And an old timer saw my tattoo, Progress Not Perfection, and he scoffed at me. You know, we're outside smoking a cigarette. He's scoffing. He goes, do you even know what perfection means? And I'm like, no, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, it blew me away that I couldn't give him a definition. And, you know... And to me, perfection always meant what you thought of me, what, what everybody else thought of me. I got to keep the perfect standards so that you see me this way. And I make up what perfect fucking means. Perfection is something that's totally coming from self. I can be yeah. perfect being an overweight guy that's a smoker, but at least I'm sober. So I'm perfect in my eyes. That's all that fucking matters. Yeah. It's your you know, idea of perfection. It's your idea of what that ceiling is. And to me, I never realized that. I I was perfectionist for so long, trying to be the perfect son, Mm -hmm. the perfect employee. Mm -hmm. I I could have been Exactly. Jay Jay Shetty, man. I love Jay Shetty. One of the little clips I watch on YouTube um, said something to the point of like, you know, so a lot of people, man, they, their impression of who they are, are, who they think everybody else thinks that they are. But they don't take, because you know he has the book Think Like a Monk. You know what I mean? And um, oh, I love that book, man. I love, I love the way he perceives things, everyday things, you know. And a lot of us are like that. A lot of us design ourselves to be, and I understand, check this out. I understand as a child, and during our formative years, right? You receiving messages, right? from your environment, who are your caregivers and your family, right? As to uh, 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 um, the composite of who they think that you are, right? And you only know that based upon the way that they react, especially when we're children, all right? We're being socialized. Unfortunately, a lot of people stop growing at a certain time. A lot of people, right, they form who they believe that they think everybody else think they are. And then when they leave their home, they still are that person. Or even if they've grown in certain areas, when they get back around that family or that that social environment, they revert back. That ain't growth to me. I am who I am today, no yep. matter who I am around. You know what I mean? If you grow, you grow. I see that all the time. Uh, my wife talks about it all the time with like her and her mom. And, like, you know, her, her mom would give her all these ways to, like, make, she would have to, like, feel a certain way all the time. Have to feel she had a certain standard she had to keep and be a certain person and be that person in this light. And it's all just trying to fulfill everybody else's needs and wants. You know what I mean? It's not self-fulfilling. It's Not at all. Yeah, exactly. So it's not until you get outside of that and you start exploring what you want as a person and who you want to be. You know, you can be 40 years old and still finding who you are. You can be 48, 49, 50. You can be 30, 35. You can be in your 20s. You know, it doesn't matter. It's about being willing, you know, to change things up, being willing to say, hey, I I don't I'm not getting this. I'm not happy. Like, Mm -hmm. why are you so happy, Jeff? You know, (laughs) how are you so happy and upbeat every day? You know, tell me how you do it, you know. And that's and that's the other reason why we're so vocal, I think, too, is we like getting those those messages. Yeah, and those comments. it's so crazy you even said that. I literally started because, again, I'm working on a website, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real heavy, you know, with my blog. You know what I mean? Because they're short little messages. I try not to write too long between, you know, my standard blogs are going to be about 
500 to 750 words. That's about two, two and a half minutes for the average reader. You know what I mean? I read a little faster, whatever. But um, I am literally working because of the messages that I've been receiving via social media. How did you get sober and write a book in the first year? You know, what did you learn? Uh, you know what I'm saying? What did you learn? So I'm literally writing a, a series about what I learned within a, in my first year. And I started that today, right? And again, we're talking about people, places, and things. Excuse me, you know? And that's what it boils down to. I'm breaking it down, you know what I mean? My top whatever, you know? But honestly, people, places, and things is what I learned when I was in treatment. It's a reference of, 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 of excuse me, how to avoid triggers, okay? And I learned that, and I, I implement that. I'm dead serious about it. People, places, things. Those nouns are extremely important to the recovering addict. You know what I'm saying? I limit, bro, I don't play. I limit. First of all, I'm blessed to work from home. My profession, aside, you know, from, from, from me recovering out loud with, with, with my content, aside from that, you know, I work, I, I work at home, you know, and that's a blessed thing. So right then and there, I have a limited social environment, which works for me. I am what they call an ambivert. I would much rather sit here and watch The Matrix as opposed to go to the movie. I'd much rather cop the CD than go to a concert. That's just me. Now, if I have to go to a concert, I'm going to show up, I'm going to show out. But naturally, I'd rather take a step back. A so what's that called? Because that sounds like me. I, I've always... Ambervert. Ambervert. You have extro, which is out. Yeah. You have intro, which is in. And... There's always a midpoint. And then you have those people who would rather chill the fuck out. But if they got to show up, they're going to show up and they're going to show out. That's me. That's me. That's me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's without a doubt me. I'm the biggest homebody, but I've traveled to 40 some states. You know, I, I will go travel if I need to. I'll show up mm -hmm. at it, you know, and do a con. You know, I've done stand up, you know what I mean? But like, I'd rather watch stand up. You know, I'd rather I'd rather do a podcast, you know, <laughs> than do something on stage anymore. Yeah. You know, and just but if I had to go on stage and talk, I can do that, too. Yeah. I mean, you know. So, yeah, I, I have, to, I have yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I never knew there was a name for it. I always just settled on like, oh, yeah, I'm an extrovert because I can hit that. I can hit that drive. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I can hit gas yeah. and go when I need to. And I know yeah. my wife's an introvert and she can't. So, yeah. like, I've always just like, well, I guess I'm just an extrovert. But I just like being at home and just like chilling. But no, I didn't know that. Wow. Now, you got to drag me to the party, but like only the people that had to drag me to the party knew they had to drag me. Because if you already had the party when I get there, you like, yeah, he's the party animal. But I'm really not. But if I'm here, we're going to have a good time. Yeah, I'm, I, know <laughs> when to, I know when to turn it on, but I also yeah. I like I like to turn it off. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't I don't I always say I don't need to be on. I don't you know, I'd I don't rather be on yellow than green. Yeah. Yeah, I That's can see what I that. I say about myself. I'd yeah, rather I be on yellow than green. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because, like, you know, and I, I found my voice in doing stand-up, right? Like, I found a voice and where I was connecting with people by telling jokes and stand-up. That was an addiction. Mm. And um, it, even in recovery, I've done stand-up, but it's not as much. But still, I, I That would be it. amazing. A What's recovering that? addict comic, like, that, that's really his spiel or her spiel. I don't think anyone's doing that. Uh, John Mulaney's about to. Okay. John Mulaney's about to his entire new tour. He's John Mulaney's touring a new hour. Actually, we'll end with this. Um, he's touring a new hour. He's going to be locally close by. Um, actually, somebody she's probably even listening. Who knows? Because she listens to a lot of my episodes. I, I got a random tag on Instagram the other day from some account I don't know. You know what I mean? Just some random account, and it was under a John Mulaney post, and it was like, you know, somebody that should have their own comedy special. You know, tag them in here for a chance to win tickets and say what their comedy special should be named. And they are a fan of the show because they took one of my old, you know, openers that I've That's talked cool. about and they tagged me in it. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm a big fan of your show. And I just, you know, I know you like stand up and blah, blah, blah. And they tagged me in it and shit. Like, I don't know who this person is. But, yeah. like. That's the kind of like fan that like keeps me to come in here every day to want right. to put out new content. Right. You know, I, maybe my numbers aren't hitting millions. You know, I'm not Joe Rogan I, numbers. Bruh. But guess what? I'm hitting. I'm getting still messages from random people all over the world. Yeah. Just saying thanks for what you do. I'm binge yeah. watching your show and it's keeping me from drinking right now. Right. 
Bro, Stupid. when I was getting high, yeah, little things like that. JD, excuse me for cutting you, bro. Bro, no. when I was getting high, I would sit there, zonked out of my mind, crying, feeling like crap. Guess what I would be watching? Evan Carmichael. Evan Carmichael. I would be high out of my mind watching Evan Carmichael's YouTube channel, which is all about motivation. The first person that I I watched that video that really broke down visualization from, from, from a perspective where I could understand it was Kanye West. And now I visualize every day. This is back when I was still smoking crack. When I was smoking crack. But see, that's the yearning. And I know I'm not the only one. I know. And this is a topic that I really want to speak about going forward. I'm glad I need to make. Well, I just made the note. But going forward with my guests going forward, I'm going to ask them about that, you know, because I, I, I want I want to I want to flesh that out. How many of us who are in recovery right now during the time that we were active users still sort out nourishing content? That's what it I, is. I was, I, was, I was hitting the stage. Another, even while. So I was hitting the stage four nights a week in addiction. I, I was on stage doing mics four nights a week. I was either in Philly. I was in Chinatown. I was in Harrisburg. I was going wherever there's open mics, even in addiction. Mm. Um, and I, actually, one of my biggest amends I had to make early, like nine months sober was to another comic. Because I felt so bad for what I did to this kid in addiction, right? Because, like, I was in Harrisburg performing all the time. And I meet this kid, and he's, like, 20 years old. And he's like, oh, you go out to Philly and perform? I'm like, yeah. I'm, he goes, my car won't make it out there, but I've always wanted to perform in Philly. And I'm like, you can come with me, dude. It's fine. Like, just drive to my house, and we'll leave by this time. So the thing is, when you're coming from where we are out in Harrisburg, you know, you you stop in Philly and you're there. The problem is I'm a drug addict and all my drugs are in Jersey over the bridge. Mm. We we're driving through Philly and this kid's like, we're not stopping, you know. He goes, where are we going? I was like, I just gotta make a stop over in Jersey real quick before we go over back to the club. Mm. And he was just like, okay. So then we pull into a McDonald's and I just park. And then he just like confused, just like looking around. He's like, what what are we doing? I was like, right, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, I got to take some drugs before I go on stage, man. You know what I mean? And uh, it's just comedy, you know, just ha, 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 stand up comedy. I got to do some drugs. And he was like, oh, OK, um, as long as it's not pills, because when I was 13, we did some pills and we crashed a car and somebody died. And I'm like, uh, it's pills, man. I, I'm, I'm going to do pills. And I'm so selfish. Mm. I did them right in front of him. Wow. You know what I mean? I did. The, I got the pills. I was like, I got to do this, man. Sorry. Ooh. And I, you know, yeah. and then to make it matters even worse, it was an open mic night where they pick out of a hat. Guess who mm-hmm. does do three minutes? And then guess who, guess who doesn't get caught up on stage? The kid? He oh. called up, man. He passed out in the first two minutes of the car ride. You know, when we got back in the car. Yeah. Right back over to Jersey to get more pills when he fell asleep before I went back. I know you was like, mm. I was like, fuck it, man. Our damage is done. Yeah. Nine, nine months. <laughs> I, I, I come back from rehab. You know, he has hit me up in rehab. He's like, where are you at? I was like, I ended up going to rehab, man. I'm working on myself. He's like, okay. Yeah. And then I saw him on my nine-month anniversary, and I was performing that night, and he was performing. He's down in Austin, Texas now, um, doing stand-up down there in Austin. He went down there when the whole movement moved down there, and I was, t- I was talking to him when I came back, though. I was making amends. Mm-hmm. And I was talking about what happened that day and, you know, more wise, you know, not not explaining myself, but just more like telling him the full story. Yeah. And he's like, man, I appreciate it. And I was like, listen, I can't do anything to take back how fucked up that was in me. But this is for now on years on stage. I will never tell the story on stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm t- I can tell on a podcast because it's still part yeah. of my story, but still like. That is his to tell on stage. That was my gifted part of it. It was like, listen, just you. this is your story. It is a funny yeah. story, man. Yeah. We didn't die. It is a funny story at the end of the day about like how fucked up I was. He goes, yeah, I'm gonna, he told it that night. He got right up there and he got to kill a bunch of laughs when I felt so much better. You know, I was like, oh, good. He got laughs. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just the madness, dude. That's the madness of our addiction, the shit, the selfishness, yeah. you know, how we put ourselves first all the time. That's just one of many examples. And I know you got a million of them too. And any addict listening right now, recovery, they're like, yeah, I did some fucked up shit like that too, man. I've been there. 
I, you know? again, one thing about me is, and, and, and yes, I've done fucked up shit. Yes. So that's that. I was getting ready to say something. I didn't want it to sound like a justification. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I was a, I was a piece of shit. I referenced myself as Crackhead Jeff for a reason. I was yeah. a piece of shit. I ain't even going to lie. I was a piece of shit. I had a moral compass. Don't get me wrong, right? But again, not to justify. I'm not going to sit there, oh, but I wasn't as bad as Crackhead JD, right? <laughs> no. Crackhead Jeff was worse every day. <laughs> Compared to Crackhead Jeff the day before, right? You can't go anywhere some pookie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You've already compared yourself to pookie. You know, and you think about it, and, and I was going to say it earlier, I was pookie, but I was also G-Money, right? Because when I first started selling drugs, I immediately started doing drugs. I started selling crack, right? I didn't like weed. I didn't like weed. Didn't like the way weed made me feel, right? Unless I was with a chick. See, my thing was I needed to be able to socialize if I was on a block selling crap. And even though I'm a little guy, really not the kind of guy that you're going to get over on, right? So I had a you know, so-called reputation, but I didn't get high like everybody else. Everybody yeah. got high. And I you didn't because something. you didn't even get high in jail because it wasn't fun for you. I remember you saying that before. Yeah, mm -hmm. Every time you did time, you weren't even getting high in jail because that wasn't, nah. you lost the social part of the aspect of the drug. Exactly. And that's yeah. what's so bizarre. That's what, that's, that's, I definitely will, will, will be uh, creating content around that, you know, because we talk about a lot of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's like, you know, how fun was the ride? Really? Was it fun for me, dude? That's why I'm, I'm looking dead in the camera. Like, <laughs> how fun was the rap? For me, for me, man, it really wasn't fun, man. You know what I'm it saying? Started, it started out as fun. As, but but man, as a child, like when yeah. I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? And then when we're talking smoking crack, no. crack ain't fun unless you got a partner. Like seriously, everybody that I know. And then you get to the, like when you first start smoking crack, it's like, oh, oh my God! See, and I equated all the movies too, and not, and I also think of crack and smoking crack. I think of the fighter, you know, when Christian Bale, when he's dicky, when he's dicky, you know yeah. what I mean? He's jumping yeah. out the fucking window. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mom, mom pulling up, and he's jumping out the window. Yeah. He lands in the trash. Yeah. Looking crazy. Trash. What's, what's wrong with Dicky again? Right? <laughs> That's what I always think of. Ooh. Is that? That documentary, that HBO documentary they did with that crack, you know, and Dude, I was, I was, I was miserable. I'm serious, bro. Like I was, I was miserable. And we talking about my last binge was four years. I was miserable, like serious, bro. You don't even understand because it's like, I think that every addict has like this, this perfect scenario in our brain of getting high. Whatever whatever you, your thing is pills, my thing is crack. Perfect scenario for somebody getting high off of crack is to get high and then have sex. That's the perfect thing. Second perfect thing is to be in a social environment where everybody is having fun and ain't nobody tripping. Right? No one's judging you. No one's nobody talking judge, shit. Everybody, you smoking, I'm smoking. You smoking some, come on, let's play cards. I've even been in situations like that. We all sitting there smoking crack, playing cards, and music is playing. Very seldom. Because <laughs> eventually somebody gonna turn their head and somebody gonna steal a crack and some, yeah, you know how that go, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I always think of uh, with that in Chappelle show, you know, Ashley Light when they're playing, Ooh. when they're playing, uh, what are they playing, man? The Chappelle show when they're when they're doing like the uh, the Project Olympics or whatever like that, and like. Don't give me the line. I see the episode. No. Yeah, I'm not, and, and you know what's crazy about Chappelle? I gotta be honest. I didn't fuck with the Chappelle show. Okay. I did not fuck with the Chappelle show. Okay. I was out smoking crack or I was in prison when I was out. But That's I got true. up on it's Chappelle. True. I got up on Chappelle because from 90 to 92, I was in prison, 93 to 96, and from 99 to 2008. Yeah. When Chappelle was out, I was in prison. Yeah. Chappelle but, was 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. That was Chappelle's show. Okay. I yeah. got up on them later, don't get me wrong, but. And then, like, I binge watched all his seasons, right? 
But I love the guy now because anything stand up that he does, and I have seen a couple episodes here and there. But go ahead with your reference. I just need you to know. No, they, yeah, one of the sketches that he that he would do right. was um, they were playing dice. You know what I mean? Okay. And um, <clears throat> and what's oh man, what is that game that you play with the dice? Steel. Four, yeah, see, like four, five, six, yeah. one, two, three, all that shit. Mm-hmm. And they're playing craps, craps or CeeLo? No, it's CeeLo. Okay. Yeah, I, I know of CeeLo because uh-huh. like, that, that's what I, yup. And yeah. we used to play that shit in school, you know what I mean? Like, we, and then we made it into a drinking game called Fuck Steve. Um, and that's only because the first time we played it, some dude named Steve threw the fuck up so much that we just had to call it Fuck wow. Steve. Wow, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, but yeah, the, the other comedian, Donald Rawlings, he would play this guy, Ashy Larry, and he would just be like in his underwear and just he would always lose all of his money. He would always just show up at everyone smoking crack and everyone yeah. chilling. But he would always lose all of his fucking money every single time and always have his wife yelling at him and shit and flipping out yeah. and always be part of the projects. And then everyone show up and get raided. Everyone's getting their pockets ran. Yeah, I <laughs> everyone's getting their pockets ran. Just, oh, here are my chains. We know it. Here, take it. That's our yeah. fault. I don't know where that shit. Excuse me. One sec. One sec. But no, you're all, yeah, you're all good. But I did not see that. I did not. Yeah, see it's that. worth it's worth watching Chappelle's show again. It's, the really cool thing about what he did is, you know, recently, you know, he lost a lot from that show, right? He did that show, and then he got offered fifty million dollars, and he said, "No, I'm leaving." Mm-hmm. Um, that was back in like 2006. He turned away a fifty million dollar contract and left. You know, um, over the years, he still had no rights to that show. He didn't make a dime off that show. They owned his name. They owned everything about it. Um, and then he went to go watch Netflix one day and he saw that Chappelle show was on Netflix. He wasn't getting paid for that. He saw Chappelle show was on Hulu. It was on HBO. He wasn't getting paid for any of that. Um, and he was like, this is bullshit. Like I should be getting paid. You guys are making money on my name. Yeah. You know? So what he did was the smartest thing he could do. First, he called Netflix. He said, Hey, Ted Sarandis, the dude that runs Netflix. You want me to keep doing comedy specials for you? Take my show down. You know what I mean? Viacom is taking that money, not giving it to me. Take my show down, please. I don't like that feeling. Mm. And Ted Sarandis being a good dude said, I got you. I took it down. But Hulu and HBO said, fuck you. We're keeping it up. You know, even HBO, of all people, said, too bad. We're leaving it. And these are the same people that turned down that show 20 years earlier. Wow. He offered it them first. And they said, no, we have nothing to do with your show. So he did the smartest thing. He made a little 10 minute special, a little 10 minute comedy special that he uploaded on YouTube and his Instagram. And he asked the fans to stop watching. Mm. He said, stop watching. Don't watch my show. I'm telling you, I'm not making a dime on it. I'll let you know if they change their mind. Just please do me a favor and don't watch my Chappelle show anymore because I'm not seeing anything for it. And they're yeah. Screwing me. Yeah. Three months later, he got a huge payout. Mm. From HBO and all them for play, and everyone now plays his show again. He then said a thank you, you know what I mean, to all the fans for sticking yeah. by him. He yeah. knew to go to the source and just say, "Hey, if they're not, if you're not going to watch it, then they're not going to play it." Yeah. So then they're going to pay me, and then everyone will watch it again. Yeah. It is free that was range. A power move. That was a power move. Yeah, and only people like Chappelle can pull that shit off, where oh, they're like, you "Gotta hey, have the leverage." You gotta have the leverage. <laughs> don't watch my show. It's like. You just won the Mark Twain Award, and you're saying don't watch your show? Like, mm-hmm. he literally just won the Mark Twain Award last year. You know, wow. for Nazi, you know what I mean? I didn't, like, I didn't know that. It's a whole special on Netflix. Definitely check that shit out. What's the name um, of it? Mark Twain Award. Yeah, it's a Mark okay. Twain. And okay. Dave Chappelle is the honored guest, and there's a lot of, like, freeform talking in between. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's the only one they televised because it's Chappelle. And okay. it's, on, it's on Netflix. If you just type in Mark Twain, you'll see it pop up with Chappelle's name next to it. But I'm going to let you go. I know you got other stuff to do. We had a long day at work, too. Um, Recovery Recovery Revolution, it's on Saturday nights. Part of my my reach. Recovery Resolution page on Facebook. Saturday night. Yes, it's, 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 thank you. Plug that for me. All right. Part of my reach. Plug all your shit, forever. Plug all your shit. We're going to end. We're going to end this with you plugging away. Plug all your shit for me, bro. Part of my reach is on the Recovery Revolution page on Facebook. 
It's also on my Sober Slogans page on Facebook. And it, it's also on my um, profile because I, I simulcast all three. Okay. It's going to change up. But for right now, that's that's where it's at. That's what we're doing. That's all I need to plug. I you got the book. You got the book. You, you're, you know, we got the book still. We got that up for there. You know, if you're looking for a book that, you know, check out, you know, what is it, a couple hundred and some pages? Yeah, it's light, man. It's it's kind of yeah. light. Yeah, but it's, light. No, but it's not too light. 153. Yeah. I mean, no, no it's, but it's not overwhelming. No, you know it's really not. You don't call the big book light. That's what, 147? Huh? <laughs> the big book's 147 pages or something. You don't call that light, do you? I do, but. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see you say that in a meeting. I, I want to be this saying is light. Like, This is light. This is a light book. Throw it at me. Yeah, all of us we throw it at you. Have a great day, man. Have a great holiday. I'll hit you up this weekend when it's out. Indeed, brother. Indeed. All right. Have a great week, Appreciate man. I'll talk to you. you too. I'll see Be you. Family. All right, later, man. All right. You all too. right.